Is Hunter Shepard a better option as backup goalie for the Capitals? Your Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and welcome into this edition of Locked On Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen or view of the day. Yes, this podcast is also available in video form. So head on over to YouTube and check it out. My name is Dan Holmey. You can find me on Twitter. It's at DanCaps218. You can find the show on Twitter. It's at Locked On Caps. So in this edition of Locked On Capitals, we talk about the net minding situation surrounding the Capitals as we know that we have Darcy Kemper and Charlie Lindgren. But is there more of viable option as a backup goalie? Then later in the show, we will look a little bit closer at Charlie Lindgren. And is he ultimately the right fit? as the backup netminder. But just to get it going here, we will talk about Hunter Shepard and how it's my belief that he could make a great option as the next backup goalie for the Capitals. And I know what you're going to say. What are you talking about? They just signed Charlie Lindgren, Chucky Sideburns to a deal last summer. Listen, this Capitals team did not get the outcome they were looking for. They didn't make it to the playoffs, period. So some players are going to have to be expendable for the greater good. And what am I talking about? If there is a team out there that is looking for, uh, you know, a pretty solid netminder, I think that Charlie Lindgren fits the bill as a backup. I don't want to say anything too, you know, negative about what he did for the Capitals. But if you have to start to pick, you know, you know, players that must go the odd man out, if you will, I think that the Capitals have a viable option in a guy like Hunter Shepard, who is absolutely killing it down in Hershey in the Calder Cup playoffs, one of the best goalies in all of the AHL. Why wouldn't he just be a perfect fit on the Capitals? That way you could look at um, uh, Charlie Lindgren as a a trade chip that you could ship on out of D.C. in favor of Hunter Shepard. When you look at the savings, it's kind of negligible. There's not a huge savings. Um, As we know, Charlie Lindgren makes a bit more money than he does, but it's not so much for money as for me as it is about just uh, getting a potential asset, being that there is a plethora of different options down in Hershey and further down. So you got Zach Fucali and Hunter Shepard and Garen B. Orkland and Clay Stevenson and Mitchell Gibson. There is a lot of different options that the Capitals have in net down in Hershey, down in the ECHL affiliate Stingrays. There is a lot of options. So, you know, if even if Zach Fucali went out somewhere and Hunter Shepard came to the to uh, the Capitals, they could either draft someone else, they could sign someone else, but we need to worry right now about the big team and making them better and also having looking at assets that you could potentially move on from. And I think that Charlie Lindgren is one of those assets. Listen, one, you know, what I've been talking about on the show, and you'll know what I'm talking about if you're an everyday of the show is I listed three untouchables. Who are they? Alex Ovechkin, Tom Wilson, and John Carlson. And after that, they should be willing to listen to offers on anyone else. I'm not saying they should give away these players, but they should be willing to listen to offers. So in this particular episode, I'm looking at one of those players in Charlie Lindgren as an expendable piece in favor of Hunter Shepard. And, um, you know, he is doing such a good job down there. I think that he would be uh, a really good fit on the Capitals. Shepard went 3-1-0-0 with just seven goals allowed in 85 saves in the Bears' second-round series win over the Charlotte Checkers. After competing with Fukali for playing time, Time for most of the season, Shepard earned the confidence of the coaching staff to lead the Bears on a deep playoff run, writes NBC Sports Washington. Whomever it has been this year, and at times he's played a lot more, and at times I've had just been good dynamics between a Shepard said following a practice in early May. If it's a good relationship, it can be a really good thing for the team, or it can be bad uh, if it doesn't work well. So I think that this has made it easier for us as well. Everyone in the locker room, whatever way it's going, and just the flexibility. I think that the Hershey Bears see a value in Zach Fucali. I think they see it in Hunter Shepard, but Hunter Shepard has just really taken to 
um, hockey this year in his job, like a fish to water and just kind of really solidifying his job in Hershey. And it is my belief that he could solidify his spot, at least as a backup on the big team. We know he got the call up uh, when Darcy Kemper got injured, never saw any game time. You know, some people saying that there must have been something that they saw, you know, in pregame skates and practices that they didn't like in Hunter Shepard's game. Or were they all, you know, putting all their chips in with Darcy Kemper or excuse me, Charlie Lindgren, uh, that, you know, they wanted their best chance to win. That could be, you know, one of the possibilities there. I guess we don't know. Both Shepard and Fukale cleared 20 wins this season, becoming the first pair of Hershey goaltenders to do so in a single season since Ilya Samsonov and Vitek Vanacek each hit their mark in 18-19. Shepard finished with one fewer than Fukale's total of 21, though he would have had a chance to add more to that total had he not spent two weeks with the Capitals in December and uh, just taking a look um, at their record and you know what kind of player are they um, you take a look at uh, Charlie Lingen you take a look at Hunter Shepard what kind of player are they so just taking a look at the regular season for the AHL Hunter Shepard was number two in all of the AHL only Dustin Wolf of Calgary was ahead of him so taking a look at Hunter Shepard in 33 games played, he had a 2.18 goals, 2.18 goals against 20 wins and eight losses. Not too bad, if you ask me. So let's take a look at the postseason so far. And he is number three uh, with a 1.82 goals against average. Is that guy going to be a good option for the Capitals? You better believe that he would be. And I understand that there is a bit of a transition between the AHL and the NHL, but I do think, you know, if you're asking my knee jerk reaction right now, I do think that Hunter Shepard would fit the bill as a backup netminder for the Capitals. Absolutely no problem. I'd put my stamp on him as I record this in May. No question in my mind. So he is, you know, if you take a look at Charlie Lindgren, he would be an asset that the Capitals could ship out in hopes of getting a bigger return. I mean, I don't want to, you know, stray too far away from Hunter Shepard here, but you take a look at Kuznetsov and Mantha, you know, as just the, the knee-jerk reactions about players that could be headed out of here. So if you start widening the lens even a little bit more, you could add Charlie Lindgren to that equation. So there are quite a few players on this team, in my opinion, that are expendable. You know, we go into the weeds a little bit more and you take a look at Backstrom and Oshie. So to all the people out there that said, you know, who are they going to move out? You know, there's no players on this team that they could move except for like Mantha and, and Kuznetsov. There are plenty of players that, that could move out if you just look at them as who who's expendable, who should stay and who should go. So if I had to pick one of the netminders that is on the big team right now to stay, of course, I'm going to say Darcy Kemper uh, over Charlie Lindgren. But with that said, I would also be willing to listen to offers on Darcy Kemper as well. I know it's a crazy thing out there, but you have to, to take a look at everything in total. Was Darcy Kemper a good goalie for us? Sure. Um, but I would like to see what kind of return that we could get for someone that is a Stanley Cup winning goalie to help make this team competitive again. I would prefer not to trade at Darcy Kemper, but I would be willing to listen to offers. So with that said, I would say that for sure, Charlie Lingren would be an expendable piece for me. Again, I'm not going to try to say anything too negative about him. I just think that Hunter Shepard serves as a better option. Shepard spent seven games backing up Charlie Lindgren in Washington while Darcy Kemper worked his way back from a concussion. He never appeared in a game for the Caps. He still has yet to make his NHL do, uh, debut, but Shepard was with the team when Ovi scored goal number 800 with a hat trick against the Blackhawks. So again, it is interesting that, you know, when he was up here and Charlie Lingern carried the bulk of the mail back in December when the Capitals went on a tear, that they didn't even try to give uh, one of those games to Hunter Shepard. Listen, I think that ultimately what was behind that, there's not too much conspiracy theory there, is that the Capitals were in a crunch and they knew that it was going to be a Hail Mary pass to make it to the playoffs, that they wanted to put the most qualified goalie, in their opinion at that time, 
it between the pipes. And at that moment, that was Charlie Lindgren. I have no doubt in my mind that if Hunter Shepard played, he would have, you know, absolutely destroyed it out there and played so well. Uh, so I don't think that that is an, uh, an issue at all. It was a little weird just because in Chicago, they don't have a spot for the goalie on the bench. And I was actually sitting in the locker room. Shepard said he scored and I was at the last one out to get out there. Everyone was already down there, but it was still pretty cool. It's something you can tell your grandkids someday that you were there when Ovechkin scored that goal. It was definitely pretty wild to be there. That is for sure. But then how did he play? When he returned after returning to Hershey in late December, Shepard pick up right where he left off and finished the year as the Bears team leader in both goals against 2.18 and save percentage 0.916. Fukale credited his teammate with his strong play and expressed how mentally uh, he has changed and how he's been steady between the pipes and how his mentality has changed. Now he shifted into a backup role. So, Fukale is being supportive of his teammate, which is a sign of maturity. And, um, you know, again, that's the rumblings that I'm hearing is that potentially Fukale could be headed out to the KHL. We don't know if that's the case, but uh, Hunter Shepard appears to be the, cr the cream that's rising to the surface uh, for the Hershey Bears, at least in net. I think internal competition is always great, Fukale said. We have a great relationship, so it's fun to play and to contribute. He's contributed a lot. He had a fantastic season. He's a big contributor to our club. Hunter is, for me, my job now is just to be ready whatever happens, I'm ready to go if they need me. So Fukale has kind of seen the writing on the walls and he understands that as it stands right now, he is the backup netminder for the Hershey Bears. Maybe there's something to why he wants to get out of the, the Bears and maybe try to seek and jumpstart his career out in the KHL. I guess we don't know about that, but I'm excited about what he brings uh, to this team, Hunter Shepard, that is. And I think that the sky's the limit for him. So I am most pumped for his future with the Capitals. I do believe he has a future as a goalie for the big team, the Capitals. Is it going to manifest itself next year as the backup? Listen, this is just me thinking about expendable pieces on the Caps. And for me, I do see Charlie Lindgren as an expendable piece that they could move out to get a return to put Hunter Shepard in there. That seems like a really good option for me. If the Caps and Brian McClellan choose to do that, uh, I guess that's up to them. All right, so after the break here, let's take a little bit closer look at Chucky Sideburns. Is he still the best choice as a backup despite everything that I've said here? We'll talk about him coming up. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With a guaranteed fit, you can be sure every part fits right the first time. Just add your ride to my garage and look at the green check to know if the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop at eBay Motors. And with over 122 parts, excuse me, 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time after all it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed get the right parts the right fit and the right prices on ebaymotors.com let's ride ebay guaranteed fit only available to u.s customers eligible items only exclusions apply All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Make sure and follow or subscribe to Locked On Capitals as I have you guys covered this entire summer when it comes to the draft, when it comes to free agency, not to mention that the shows that we've had on before with Mike Vogel and uh, a lot of the different great beat writers I just had on Washington Hockey Now. So make sure and subscribe wherever you find your podcasts and on YouTube. All right, in this next segment here, we are going to talk about Chucky Sideburns. And is he a good option for the Capitals in that, um, you know, going forward? I know that he is the guy that is under contract and he has done a great job. Let's look, you know, most notably in the month of December uh, when uh, Darcy Kemper got injured, he saved the Caps bacon to use a Craig Lachlan term there. So 
I do think that, uh, you know, he, he plays pretty well, all things considered. I still do see him as an expendable piece, given the fact of what they have down in Hershey. As is usually the case, Washington Capitals netminder Charlie Lindgren makes his way off the ice long after practice is over. He usually stays on later, much later, to fine-tune his game while working with the team's extra forwards drenched in sweat. He sports a big smile and he takes in the dressing room around him ver the very one that's changed the course of his pro career writes the ho um, the hockey news here. So last summer, Lingren got a phone call of a lifetime as he was offered a three-year contract in the first full-time NHL role in D.C. He put pen to paper on the opening day of free agency, shot a text over to Darcy Kemper, and got ready to hit the road. And looking back, Lingren knows he made the right choice. And, um, you know, he, he did play, you know, pretty well overall towards the end of the season. He struggled a little bit. What's behind my enthusiasm is really just the journey that I've traveled to get here. There's been a lot of ups and downs. This is absolutely where I want to be, Lingren told the Hockey News. I couldn't be happier to be a Washington Capitol. You're able to kind of take a step back for a moment and just kind of reassess where you're at. When I look at the games I've played, I'm pretty happy with the way it's gone. And again, to reiterate, I'm not trying to diminish what kind of player Charlie Lindgren is, what kind of goalie he is, but I still do see him expendable. Do I think that Hunter Shepard is a better goalie than Charlie Lindgren? I do. And I know that that is probably going to be met with kind of some criticism about, are you kidding me? Then why is he playing down in the AHL? Just his stats speak for him for themselves. I do think that when Hunter Shepard gets his opportunity, he will make uh, the most of it. That is for sure. Lindgren started 26 games and played in 31 games for the Caps this season and also made a statement as a star of the month back in December when he led his team through a surge with Darcy Kemper concussed through 11 games that month, he boasted a league-high nine wins with a .929 save percentage and a 2.02 goals against. Um, so where was did he struggle a little bit um, as we take a look? Uh, after that is when he kind of had uh, some struggles in net. There were some struggles later in the year that led to his final .899 save percentage to close out the year. And while he wanted some of those goals back, he reminded and remained confident in his ability and said that he did what he had to do and wanted to improve and play a key role, whether he was starting or backing up. I come to the rink every day with a purpose, Lindgren said. I want to get better on the ice. I want to be a really good teammate off the ice as well. And again, listen, he did an admirable job in the month of December. He really kind of killed it. He kind of put the Capitals in the right direction. He gave them a glimmer of hope that they could have potentially made it to the playoffs. As we know, that wasn't the case, but he did come in and do what a backup is supposed to do. If your starter's injured, what happens? The backup goes in and should be the, the change should be flawless. And it was. But then he struggled a little bit towards the end of the year. So that's kind of the precarious position uh, that the Capitals are in. Listen, I know that he is uh, you know, a great guy in the locker room and, and all the Capitals and everyone like him. Uh, he's got a great personality and he's got a really great mustache. Is it really a positive attribute? I hear a lot of people saying, well, I love him because of his mustache. And I guess, you know, if you can grow one like that, maybe that's something to be proud of. <laughs> and uh, I'm just having a lighthearted moment with you guys here. But that's the way I assess it. I take a look um, at Charlie Linger and I take a look at Hunter Shepard and I'm trying to, you know, make a determination on who I think is better. Taking a look at his contract, uh, he is current salary is $1 million. 200 current cap hit 1 million uh 100,000 um so again it's not so much for me about a money thing per se uh because if we take a look um at um Hunter Shepherd here uh he is 1 million 500 the length of his deal was 2 years so the difference there is negligible not a big difference there but for me it's just taking a look at a piece 
I think that Hunter Shepard down in Hershey would be an upgrade. And I think that Charlie Lindgren is not quite as good as Hunter Shepard. So I could see them kind of pushing him out or maybe bundling him in a deal with like a Mantha or Kuznetsov or something like that. I'm not the GM of the team. I'm just kind of floating ideas out here with you guys uh, this summer about how we can make this team better. And we hear all the time that we need to be aggressive, but what does that really mean? When I ask people all the time, well, how aggressive would you get and who would you move? And they would say, you know what, Dan, I think they should move Anthony Mantha. Like that's a bold statement. That's that's a no-brainer. Or Kuznetsov. Everyone knows that Kuznetsov wants to be out of D.C., but you have to go look into it a little bit deeper about who are the expendable pieces. That is the more difficult part. That's when you start getting into the Baxter, Minoshi, that kind of thing. So that is where this all comes from, that I could see Charlie Lindgren as being a potential piece that they could move out of town. All right, so after the break here, let's take a look at the goaltending position in general for the Capitals. And who would be best suited to be the backup and who would be the best to be starting? We'll talk about that coming up. So our next sponsor is a bit new to me, Bird Dog Clothing. Bird Dogs, they are comfortable pants. Listen, women have comfortable pants that they can wear. Why can't guys wear comfortable pants? Well, I'm here to tell you that Bird Dogs are comfortable. I look better and I feel great wearing Bird Dogs. Their stretchy, their stretchy fabric makes my legs look great and they're comfier than my other shorts and pants. You know, jeans and that kind of thing, sometimes they're rough. So around the house, that's what I like to wear. I like to wear my Bird Dogs. They give me the freedom to wear one pair of short pants on the golf course, to a meeting, to hanging out with friends, stuff like that. So talking about personal experiences and that kind of thing is just having a comfortable pair of pants that you can wear out. For the longest time, for guys, it's like you just have to wear the standard. You have to wear jeans or you have to wear khaki, something like that. Bird dogs are great because they fit great, they're comfortable, and they're versatile. So I think that you should try them out. That is for sure. So go to birddogs.com slash locked on NHL. And when you enter promo code locked on NHL, they'll throw in a free custom bird dogs Yeti style tumbler with every order. So go to birddogs.com slash locked on NHL. And when you enter promo code locked on NHL, they'll throw in a free custom bird dogs Yeti style mug. You really can't beat that. So go on over and try some bird dogs today. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So just, you know, taking a look at the net mining position, taking a look at the team in total, um, what do I think of the net mining position? Well, if you take a look at the season before, kind of like the last two seasons before, it was Vitek Vanacek and Ilya Samsonov, and what was the thing that was known about that tandem? Inconsistent suffices to say. But, you know, it's interesting. Vanacek went out to New Jersey. They made it into the playoffs. Subsequently, they were uh, eliminated. Same goes for Ilya Samsonov. He went up to Toronto, excuse me, and subsequently they were eliminated as well. But it's interesting that these goalies, you know, that are on the Capitals sometimes don't play the best. Then they go to a different location and play really well. See Phoenix Copley out in the Kings. See uh, Philip Grubauer with the Kraken. You know, take a look at Varlamov, how he was playing with the Islanders. So there's just this long history of, you know, goalies that sometimes maybe don't find their footing in D.C., but they get a change of scenery and they do really well. So in any case, what happened last season was that Brian McClellan, he saw it. He, you know, he saw the net mining position was the Achilles heel or one of the Achilles heels heel of the Washington Capitals. So what did he do? He addressed the situation. He didn't just go out and replace one of the net minders. He didn't just pick up Darcy Kemper and then ride it with Sam Sonoff or Vanacek. He said, no, I'm done with it. I've been there. I've done that. And I've seen enough. I'm cutting ties. I'm not giving um, uh, qualifying offers to either one of those netminders. So what did he do? You know, there was rumblings out there that I heard for the longest time that Darcy Kemper could be coming to the Capitals. And I'm like, no way is Darcy Kemper going to want to come to the Capitals. He just won a Stanley Cup out in Colorado. Well, guess what? He swung for the fences and connected and Darcy Kemper came to the district and all things considered, I think played pretty well. So then what else happened? They signed Chucky Lindgren, Charlie Sideburns to the team, a guy I wasn't too familiar with. I got to be honest with you. I know that he played rather well in St. Louis. 
uh, also with their AHL affiliate Thunderbirds. And, you know, all things considered, I think he did um, a slightly above average job. I got to say average to slightly above average if I'm going to put a, a report card out on him. So that's when I come to this conclusion about, you know, Charlie Lingren's pretty good. And I know he just signed a new contract, but you know, I think there's a better option. And, you know, that's why I started to kind of widen the lens a little bit. And I started to take a look down in Hershey. Is there a guy that's down there that could help this team and maybe make a little bit less, maybe be a little bit of an upgrade? Um, and I saw that in Hunter Shepard. I've seen that glimpses of that in Zach Fukale in previous seasons. But Hunter Shepard, like I said, is the cream that has risen to the top. He is one of the best, and the stats prove it. He is one of the best uh, in all of the AHL. If you missed it in the earlier segment there, taking a look at the regular season, Hunter Shepard was number two in all of the AHL. Uh, so that, you know, is very impressive. They don't, you know, you don't get those kind of accolades for playing, you know, half cocked out there. He did what he had to do, and he did a great job uh, down in Hershey, and that's why I'm saying I think that he is poised uh, to do really great things for um, the Capitals going forward. I do think that he has the pedigree. Taking a look back uh, a little bit on him, the six foot one, two hundred and ten pound goaltender was co-captain of the UMD Bulldogs in Duluth, Minnesota. His senior year, he went 22, 10 and two with a 2.18 goals against average and a 0.918 save percentage. He finished his collegiate career with a 76, 37 and five record over 119 games and finished first in UMD history with wins 76 goals, excuse me, 76 goals against average 1.94 and save percentage 0 0.922 and shutouts 17 rights field pass hockey. So pretty amazing uh, when you take a look at it about, um, you know, just his pedigree and intrinsically uh, what kind of goalie he is. It is an interesting thing for me to think about, about what kind of goalie he can be, uh, you know, going forward. Not, you know, so say for some reason he doesn't get his opportunity with the Capitals next year. I think that he will continue to dominate uh, down in Hershey. I have no reason to believe that he won't, but it's something to consider as we make our way through the summer is just to yourself, start thinking and hit me up on Twitter at DanCaps218 or at LockedOnCaps. I want to hear from you, the fans of the team. Who are some of the expendable pieces on this team that they could move out? Kind of scrub away the ideas that they're under contract or all that. Listen, if, if players are under contract, you can still trade them. It makes it a little bit more difficult if there's no trade clauses or limited um, uh, teams that they'll go to. So if it's an absolute no trade clause, then of course, then you can't do that unless they're willing to budge. But sometimes players have it where they will play on a handful of different teams. Then you need that kind of flexibility. There's also the stickiness of salary retention. I get all that, but I want to hear from you about what players on this current team right now would be expendable pieces that could help make this team better. Um, it is an interesting thing to think about, about who, you know, you know, it's hard sometimes to think about when you think about someone like a Nick Baxter or TJ Oshie or one of these guys that has been here for so long and really helped, you know, make this team who it is today. So I want to hear from you. Go ahead and hit me up with your comments on who you think uh, would be one or the many expendable players on this team that could help this team get back into the competitive business of winning hockey games on a regular basis. All right. Once again, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals. And listen, guys, I love talking Capitals hockey with you guys on this podcast. I would love to talk to you on a one-on-one -on -one basis. You can text me on subtext. If you're on YouTube, you see the information scrolling across the bottom of the screen. If you're listening on the audio side, there'll be more information in the show notes. But if you want to talk about the trades that could take place, if you want to talk about the draft or what players should come or go, hit me up on subtext and we can text back and forth on Caps Hockey all summer. I think it would be a lot of fun. And are you an everydayer of Locked On Capitals? I would sure love to hear from you. Hit me up on Twitter at DanCaps218 or at Locked On Caps and say, hey, Dan, I'm an everydayer of Locked On Capitals. I'll give you a shout out on Friday's show. All right. So once again, thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Dan Holmey, and I'll talk to you again next time.